So this represents the second half of the thermodynamic structure. Here, this is really just a property of things that we've already talked about. The change in energy of the universe is zero, and the overall change in energy is zero. So that means energy system is lost from the surface. Our energy by the system is gained by the surrounding. They are equal and opposite charge and and symbol. Okay, so here the system is giving off energy, and so you see that with the so this is a similar to a combustion. Okay, so we're are the thing of heat as it's as it's burning. The system the surroundings are gaining in energy. It gets more burn stuff. So as you burn stuff in your fireplace, the surrounding room is increasing in energy. Its temperature is going up. Okay, It is being given off from the wood and the room is getting warmer. Okay, So that's a negative and positive opposite in sign. So that way, if this was and this is positive 100, then the change in the universe is zero. Okay. Likewise, the other way around, as surroundings, okay, the system would be gaining that. So, an example is in like. So, uh, photosynthesis is full of this. The universe is essentially sun surroundings. Hmm. Okay. Hang on one second. All right. Okay. This time with the audio fixed. So, if we're looking at things like photosynthesis or flowers that are absorbing energy. So the system is absorbing the energy. The flowers are absorbing energy from the, from the surroundings. The, the sun essentially, or the environment represents the surroundings. And then the, the flower represents the system. So here it's gaining energy. Uh, its value is positive. Again, this is converting energy from one position to another. The energy is not lost, it just changes form. So the energy from the sun is absorbed by the plants through photosynthesis. And again, I mean, there are inefficiencies in the, in the system throughout the whole process. I mean, there, there is loss in energy, so the energy conversion is not 100%. So think of it like, you know our bodies for example the example or like the internal combustion engine right so your car as it burns fuel it gets warm because the energy that goes from it burning the fuel into you driving it's not 100% efficient it's nowhere even near that so its efficiency is relatively low and so the extra energy is virtually lost as heat. So this is why your car gets warm. Your energy, your, your entire you know, car system gets warm because of the extra energy that is essentially lost during the combustion process, okay? Your car is not efficiently converting all of the energy lost from the combustion over to mechanical en energy and turning of, of you know, cranks and things like that in the car to keep it going, okay? I mean, this is why things like we see uh, various kinds of engine thing uh, mechanics that try to change or alter the engine's efficiency rate. So things like, um, I don't know, probably one example might be like a, say in some uh, turbo engines, they, they try to recapture some of that heat. So it's like, you, you have this much of it that, that's, that's gained from, from burning the gas, and then you have this much that's, that's lost as heat. And, but if you can try to recapture some of that and cycle it over here, then you've increased your, your car's efficiency 
and you can get more out of your engine. You get more power or more, you know, you know energy from, from each gallon burned. If you could recapture some of that lost energy and funnel it back and in, back into your car. So there, there's, there's ways to try to recapture some of that and then turn it back into heat. So we see, it's not exactly the same kind of concept, but like in the, like in the Prius, um, you know, as you apply your brakes, it tries to recapture some of that lot, that energy and then funnel it back to recharging the battery. Right. So if you, when you, as you're going down a hill and you hit the brakes, then it's, it's recharging the battery as it tries to cycle, ca capture some of that and pull it, pull it back into the car. So, um, so there's energy lost throughout the different steps. Our bodies, for example, too. So as we eat, we're not 100% efficiently converting the food that we eat into stored energy or active kinetic energy. It's radiated in our body heat. We, the extra energy that is not used is, is lost, right? So there are losses of energy as, as heat that are not functionally doing anything along the way, okay? All right, so now in our chemical systems, let me move my screen over here. If we look at this kind of example here, we have carbon burning in the presence of oxygen to make CO2, okay? So this is a combustion problem. It's giving off energy to the surroundings. CO2 is lower in energy, right? It is a more stable molecule. So because it is more stable, it gives off energy as it is made. This is also called a formation reaction. Uh, we'll talk more about this uh, later point, but a formation reaction here generally in making molecules, a lot of times in these very simple molecules, they are more stable than their initial elements. And so they, they give off energy as they, are, as they are made. So this is also why we see things like this in, throughout, throughout the universe, we see things like methane, carbon dioxide, and you know, sulfur, or I mean, uh, sulfuric acid and ammonia and all kind, kind and all kinds of other, uh, you know, uh, you know, molecules throughout throughout the cosmos. So these things form naturally. These molecules form naturally because the formation of these molecules is is lower in energy than the raw elements. When we have carbon and hydrogen and oxygen and nitrogen being made through you know through various cosmic processes not just from you know for, from sun fusion but through you know there's various processes you know uh, the supernovas and things like that but once we have the elements being made they react naturally and form other compounds okay so because the formation is lower in energy most things in the universe tend to want to move towards a lower overall energy it, it makes it for a, a more stable compound. Why would it choose to be carbon and oxygen if it could be CO2 and be in a lower, more stable molecule, right? So the giving off of the energy here is negative, okay? The system is giving off energy, so it's value. So you'll see here the delta E RxN. So delta, the change in energy, RxN of reaction. So RxN here is reaction, right? So the change in energy of the reaction is negative, okay? So it's saying, so this is kind of where you'd have to interpret and know what this is talking about, that the change in energy of the reaction is giving off energy, okay? The energy is, is being given off. The products are lower in energy than the reactants, okay? The system is giving off the energy to the surroundings, Right, so if we reverse this then, okay, and we were to go back the other direction and we were to split the carbon off from the, from, from the CO2, okay, we wanted to split the carbon and oxygen back apart, it requires an equal and opposite amount of energy. 
okay? If it took 100, if this gave off 100 kilojoules of energy, it then would take 100 kilojoules of energy to put them back, to, pay, to take them back apart, okay? So it is an equal and opposite reaction. So as we swap the reaction around, as it goes backwards the other direction, okay, if it goes, if it's 100 kilojoules one direction, it's 100 kilojoules to go back the other direction. It's just there's a change in sign. Okay, so you'll notice this when we get to Hess's law, this will be one of the kind of the concepts in Hess's law that we'll come back to, but it's good to remember this as we get to later in the chapter, okay? That chemical reactions, as we go backwards and forwards, they are equal and opposite in their energy. Okay. All right, so we had two things that we talked about in the beginning was work and heat. Now I already described work as more of a kind of a physics term where we're applying a force over a distance. Okay, so if I have an object and I apply a force and push it a certain distance, then I'm doing work. Okay, if I apply a force and it doesn't move, I'm not technically doing any work, right? So, but for us, work systems are gonna be more in the frame of things like gas systems. So gases will expand or contract in their, like if you think about a balloon, right? The expansion of a balloon or the contraction of the balloon, that is, that is the movement that we're talking about is the expansion and contraction of a, a, you know, a balloon or a piston are common examples of how this gets framed. So the force is usually the pressure, right? So if I'm pushing on a balloon, I'm applying the pressure really, or if I'm inside the balloon and I'm pushing out, it's the pressure of the gas on the inside. Okay, so the pressure is usually our force, and then the change in volume really is our, is our measure of distance, okay? Um, heat, in this case, we will measure as Q, okay? So heat and work exchange between systems and surroundings. So this is, again, just something where the relationship between these two is very simple but they make it difficult by not telling you signs on these various things. So they just tell you that 100 kilojoules of work is done and 100 kilojoules of, of heat is lost, but then you can't just take those two values and add them together, okay? That's really all you have to do is add heat and work together in order to find the value that, of energy that they want, but they leave the signs off on purpose so that if you don't assign it the right sign, you're not gonna get the right answer, okay? All right, so work, okay? Work done on the system, okay, indicates a positive value, okay? Work done by the system indicates a negative value, okay? so. Uh, this is a little hard to to do without me draw again when I make these slides, I always assume that I can give you some sort of other visual as I write um, so work being done on the system okay if we're thinking about about our balloon, okay my balloon is my system if the the surroundings okay so the surroundings are doing the work or i'm doing or i'm doing work on the system. So if I'm doing work on the system, I'm pushing on the system. I'm making, I'm pushing it down together. Right? I'm pushing it down. So as I'm pushing on the system, that's the work being done, right? So the direction of the expansion or the di direction of the balloon's size is going in, right? So in towards the, the system, right? So going into the, anything where, where energy is going into the system, the value is positive. Right? So if I'm putting something in my mouth, okay, I'm putting energy into the system. Okay? I'm putting energy into the system. So if my balloon, if I'm pushing my volume in, okay, my, my energy direction is going towards the center of the balloon. I'm pushing and making, a, and the balloon is generally not expanding, it is contracting. Right? So the work being done by the system, okay, so 
I, it's not a pulling force, okay? So I can't pull the balloon out and stretch it out. That's not, a, that's not how, how this is gonna work. It's the molecules inside the balloon are pushing on the balloon, and so the work is gonna be going out. So the ex, it's gonna be expanding, right? So the expansion is due to the molecules inside the balloon pushing out. It's not expanding because I'm pulling on it. There's, it's not a pulling force. These are pushing forces. Okay, so which direction am I pushing? Am I pushing in or is it pushing out? Okay, I can't push, you know, the, the surroundings aren't pushing out. They would have to pull out, right? So it's the system inside is pushing out if it's expanding or I'm pushing down to contract, okay? So if the system, if the work is being done by the system, okay, the pushing, the system is pushing out, the work value is negative. Okay, anything leaving the system, okay, going out of the system is gonna be negative. Okay, going into the system is positive. Okay. So, same kind of diagram here. Work going into the system, positive. Work leaving the system, it's negative, okay. Anytime the system is contracting, it's gonna be positive, okay? Anytime the system is expanding, that's gonna be negative, okay? Negative is expansion, all right? Same thing with heat. So heat's a little easier to, to deal with since it, we can more easily relate to heat going in and out of a system, okay? My water, is not going to boil on its own, right? I have to put energy into the system in order to, in order to boil it, okay? So the Q value would be positive. I have to put energy into the system in order to, to raise its temperature. Or heat being released, okay? My log, if I'm burning it, is giving off heat. It's giving off heat, and so the, X, the, the Q value is, is negative, okay? So same, same thing for Q as we saw for W. Like I said, anytime we see the positive value, it is going to indicate that we are putting energy into the system, okay? Energy is going into the system. Whereas if it's negative, energy is going out of the system, okay? We're burning stuff, we're boiling stuff, okay? My water doesn't, boil on its own, I have to put heat in in order to raise its temperature, okay? So why these, this is what I was alluding to before here is really this value here. All right, so, all right, some, some notes here uh, at the top. Some books, depending on which book you use, may have a delta U, okay, which, is internal energy, okay? It's the same thing as delta E, but some books refer to this as delta U versus delta E, okay? It's just something to be mindful of, okay? Because if you're reading this later on or you're looking through your book and you read the chapter, I don't know how many people are actually reading the, the chapters that you have, presumably you should be reading uh, reading out of, out of whatever book you've got. So some books refer to it as delta U, okay? Just letting you know. Move this back up here to the top. All right, so the relationship here for the internal energy, remember the internal energy is all the heat and the work in the system. It's basically a measure of the system's total energy, okay? It's just Q plus W, okay? Pretty simple, all right? Like I said, they complicate this by not telling you the sign on Q and W. And so if you just slap the Q and W together, thinking that's how simple it, it is, sometimes that leads you astray, okay? All right. So these are just looking at what are the relationship values of Q of the positive and negative with respect to these, you know, this is this is often how you'll see it worded in the chapter. Again, there's only so many ways that a problem can reference heat being lost or gained 
or work being done. So it's either being done by or being done on, right? Or it's or they'll they'll refer to it, you know, by the surroundings, right? So they'll say the surroundings are doing work. Um, so the work is done on the system. So they'd be say the work is done by the surroundings, right? Or the work is done on the surroundings. So they're kind of the opposite. If you put the surroundings in here, like I said, it's just it's just how they word it. That's about it. That's about as difficult as they can make these problems. It's just trying to trick you in the wording of the problem. Okay. And like I said, this, this particular problem um, may be worded in a way where they just tell you that work, that the system is doing, is doing the work, but they leave it to you to put the, the negative in there, okay? Or they'll say the system is giving off heat and doing work. And so you have to put the signs in there, right? So that, that obviously changes the, the math, right? So it's just, you're just adding the two numbers, right? But if they tell you that the system absorbs 400 kilojoules of heat and the, the system does 90 kilo, kilojoules of work, if you're just adding 40 and 90 would get you a positive 490, right? But that's obviously not the answer. So you have to assign the sign in here. So that's what you have to be cautious of when approaching these problems is, what sign does it really want me to put on there? Okay. Same thing here. They would say this, the system gives off 400 kilojoules of heat by doing 90 kilojoules of work. And so you have to assign the negative signs in there to get the negative 490. And of course, you can almost bet that there's two answers on this test that are gonna be 50-50, right? Because if one of the answers is 490, what do we think one of the other likely answers is? Positive 490, right? So just to make sure to throw you off, there's gonna be a positive 310 in there too, you know, as well as the 490 where you just added them together. Right, so very likely answers are easy to be at hand for these kinds of problems where when you're doing it quick and you pipe it in your calculator, boom, that there's an answer right there on the test. It's, there it says 490 right there. That was the first number I just clicked in, boom, you got the right answer, right? So it's easy to be thrown off in, the, in, in these even though they are very simple problems where you're just adding two numbers together. Okay, so here's an example. Okay, a reaction occurring in a flask releases 890 joules of heat to the surroundings and the gas per per performs 450 joules of work on the surroundings by pushing the piston upward. Okay, so determine the signs for Q and W and determine delta E for this reaction. Okay, so Let's look at the let's look at the wording and, and figure out what, what they're gonna say, right? So it releases 890 kilojoules of heat. Okay, so the system, the, the reaction is releasing heat. Okay, heat is going, is coming off of the system. So we'd expect our system to be negative. Okay, and the gas performs work by pushing the piston upward. Okay, so it's pushing upward. Okay, so again, the pushing up is away from the middle, out of the system, the work is being done. Okay, so both of these are, are negative values. They're both less than zero. Okay, Q is less than zero, so it's negative. W is less than zero, so it's negative, okay? So you'd have to put two negatives in there. Negative 890, negative 450, and then, we could add them together and get the total delta E. All right, let's see. All right, all right. One uh, one other way that this gets that this gets tricky, and these are just these are just really just just testing your attention to detail. Okay, again, there is nothing 
more simple than adding two numbers together, okay? It is not the math that is the challenging part here, okay? It is the conceptual applying what we believe should be happening to these processes to the problem. The other way that this gets tricky is they rely on you not paying attention. And so they may say a reaction releases 890 kilojoules of heat and performs 450 joules of work. Okay, you cannot add kilojoules and joules to one another. Okay, they have to be the same unit. They have to be apples and apples. So you'd have to convert one of them in order to, in order to add them together. So if this one was kilojoules and this one was joules, it'd be 0.45 kilojoules, right? And so that obviously makes a very big difference of 1340 and 890.4 or 0.5 if we round it, right? Because if you converted this to, to if this is joules and we're converting over, we'd move the decimal place three times and it'd be 0.54 joules. And so then if you added those two together, it would be just negative 890.5, right? So big difference in the numbers because they, they just, it's not, it's not that it's difficult. It's just they throw in some tricky things in there that you got to pay attention to when you're doing this, okay? So that's all we, that's all we got to do is just pay attention to the, to the details and these are relatively straightforward problems. Okay. All right, work, okay? So how do we calculate? So we're gonna be able to calculate, we've talked about internal energy, we've talked about work and, uh, and heat as individual terms, but now we wanna be able to calculate them outside of the internal energy. Okay, so like I said, this is generally in terms of gases, so we're talking about a gas expansion. And so like, just like you saw in that previous problem, which is common, that's a common how, how these, are, these are explained as far as a piston doing expansion, uh, because pistons are a movable cylinder that has, you know, the plunger moves up and down. And so the gas can expand or contract, or we can push down and change the volume. And so the, the force over a distance is, here in terms of pressure, and as I said, the chain, the delta value, okay, the delta means the same thing here, okay, change in volume, final minus initial, okay? So work is equal to negative P delta V, okay? Now, here's the other thing you got to keep in mind, okay? Our pressure is usually in ATM, our volume is usually in liters, okay? ATM liter is not a unit of energy, okay? Work is an energy term, but ATM liter is not an energy unit, okay? So we have to convert, so when we put our ATMs and our liters in here, you have to convert that value to a joule unit, okay? And that uses this conversion here at the bottom. Okay, so we need to multiply whatever answer you get out of this, you have to multiply by 101.3. Okay. The reason for this is because if we, again, if we look at it from purely physics terms, okay, the pressure would be in Pascals, right? Pascal. And my volume would be in meters cubed. A Pascal meter cubed is directly a joule. Okay, so the physics terms, Pascal meter cubed, pressure and volume directly translate to an energy term, okay? But since we don't do, we generally will not do things in Pascals or meters cubed, our ATM liter, notice that 101.3 is pretty much the conversion to a Pascal, right? A Pascal in the previous chapter, we had Pascals and we had kilopascals. So it was 101.3 kilopascals in one ATM. So this is just a conversion, including the, the liter to a meter cubed, okay? So whatever you, your unit is here, you have to remember to multiply by 101.3, okay? You can almost bet 
that the answer that you first put in your calculator is an answer on the test. So if you don't do the conversion, your first number is gonna be wrong, okay? So here's, so here's an example, okay? If a balloon is inflated from 0.1 liters to 1.85 liters against an external pressure of one ATM, how much work is done, okay? So our change in volume, again, is final minus initial, okay? So the final minus the initial, 1.85 minus the initial, so my delta V, 1.75, okay? So against one ATM, it's pretty easy. So it is the 1.75, so it's a negative 1.75. But the ATM liter, we have to multiply by 101.3 in order to convert this to a joule. So you can almost guess, bet, that there's probably some unit on the test that says 1.75 joules as a unit, because, I mean, obviously if we're not, you know, you have to put the unit in there. So if you just did the first math, 1.75 is a logical wrong first answer that would show up, right? So multiplying by 101, we get 177 joules is how much work is done. Okay. So we'll go through this one. All right. So specific heat, okay? So, no, hang on. Uh, both negative, all right. So which one are you referring to? Are you talking about this problem here? I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention to the, to the chat. I, I missed when, when you might've asked that. Previous example, all right, going back. Okay, why, so why are both of these negative? Okay, so um, the heat being released, okay, it's releasing heat, okay? So if something is releasing heat, the system is releasing heat, so it's, it's hot, okay? It's giving off energy, okay? Uh, the reaction, okay, it's the reaction releases the heat. So the reaction is the system, okay? The system is releasing the heat, okay? So the system is giving off heat. So anytime heat, the heat value is going out, it's negative, okay? Uh, anything, anytime energy leaves the system, it's negative, okay? So the system is releasing heat, the value is going out, okay? And the gas per performs work by pushing on the piston upward. So again, it's pushing the piston upward. So again, I'm pushing the piston upward, okay? The direction of energy is going away from the center, okay? If this is the center, it's going away from the center, okay? So anything, anytime the energy is going away from the center, okay, it is negative. So the energy or the heat loss is going, going out, the work is going out, they are both the same sign. Okay, leaving the system, going out of the system is negative. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see, I'll skip this one. All right, so specific heat. All right, so this one deals with our heat value. Okay, so here we have Q. Here we have the, re the equation for Q, heat, okay? Q equals MC delta T, okay? M is the mass, okay? So there's mass. C is a new term called specific heat. We'll talk about this in a second. And here we have delta T, the change in temperature, final minus initial, okay? So the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Mass is usually measured in grams. Um, the delta T is usually in this case, just degree C, okay? So specific heat is related to the material, okay? So it is a physical property where we look at how much energy is required 
to raise one gram of the substance one degree Celsius. Okay, now I already made a comment like that in the previous video when I was talking about the calorie. Okay, the calorie was specifically about water. Okay, so how much water, how much energy was required to raise the temperature of water one degree Celsius was our definition for a calorie. Okay, so here we're not talking about water, it can be any substance. Okay, so any substance can have a specific heat. So how much energy, if we look at a pure substance, okay, so it's generally in regard to pure substances. So if you have iron, okay, how much energy is required to raise one gram of iron one degree Celsius? Okay, that would be its specific heat, okay? So let's look at table here. So here you can see a variety of specific heats with related with relation to some materials. Okay. Now metals, okay. M metals require very little energy to raise their temperature. Okay. So the example that I usually use is if we're thinking about like the summertime, okay, we have our, our bottle of water, we've left out in our car, right? It's 100 degrees out, 100% humidity here in Virginia. My car is balmy hot when I get back into it after it's been sitting out in the sun all day, okay? The water in my, in my glass, so we say, you know, if we're talking theoretically, it's been, abs it's been absorbing the same amount of energy as the remaining materials, okay? So the metal on my car has been subjected to the same amount of heat, same amount of energy as the water, okay? It's been in the same amount of direct sunlight for the same amount of time, okay? And so my water is not boiling, okay? My water's not boiling, right? Because it takes a relatively large amount of energy, okay? Look at any of these other numbers, okay? it takes a relatively large amount of energy to raise its temperature one degree Celsius as compared to the like aluminum on my car, right? That, that little strip on your, on your windshield, you roll down the windshield and you put your arm out there and you know, you get burned cause it's super hot, right? Or you're not thinking about it and you, you burn yourself cause it's super hot outside, right? So the metal on the car is really hot. Okay, because it takes less energy to raise its temperature. Okay, so the smaller the number, the less, t less energy it requires to raise its temperature. Right, so metals, okay, if I take 100 kilojoules, if I take 100 kilojoules of energy, okay, and I apply it to lead or I apply it to water, okay, take 100 grams of the same substance, 100 grams of lead and 100 grams of water, okay? Same energy, same mass. The lead is gonna have a much, much higher change in temperature than the water will, okay? The water, they have virtually almost no change in, in its temperature from 100 kilojoules, whereas the lead is gonna have a significant amount of change in temperature with that same amount of heat. Okay, because its value, its heat capacity is very low. Okay, now this also works the other direction too, right? So if I take my aluminum foil and I put it in my, in my oven, right? If I'm making, you know, chicken nuggets, right? For, for, for the five-year-old and I put the aluminum foil in the oven, right? Yeah, the aluminum foil gets hot, right? But I can pull it out and it cools off really quickly too. It also loses that heat really quickly. Okay, this is why like you're boiling water from your spaghetti, it takes a while to cool down, right? Whereas the metal that you may have had your, you know, you know, what, whatever else thing, you know, for, from your oven cools down pretty quick, okay? My garlic bread, it was on my, on my aluminum foil, cools off really quickly 
as opposed to the water that takes some time to cool off, okay? Because the energy gained, right, it also takes, you know, it also loses that energy with, with respect to that as well, okay? So it quickly loses, so it, it may quickly gain that energy or raise that temperature, but also loses that temperature very quick, okay? So this is an important feature for things like water specifically. So the amount of energy absorbed by our sun, having as much water as we do is very good uh, as far as absorbing a lot of that energy and also making it, and the fact that its heat capacity is so high also allows it to absorb a lot of that energy without just boiling off, right? Uh, if its energy was, if it was, if its heat capacity was, you know, was much lower, was a lot lower, then it would just boil off with the, with the amount of sun, you know, or the sunlight would just, you know, you know raise its temperature enough to hit its boiling point and it would be gone, right? All right, so um, these problems are pretty straightforward. A lot of times these tend to be very plug and chug kind of problems as well, okay? So we have how much heat is absorbed by a copper penny whose mass is three grams, it raises from negative eight to 37 degrees C. Okay, so uh, we have a change in temperature. Okay, so we have most of our terms here. Okay, so our change in temperature, final minus the initial, 37 minus negative eight, so our delta T is 45 degrees. My heat capacity, so the, the if you're wondering where this came from, this comes from a table. So this, so this would have to go back. So it's not six four in this particular problem. Um, this, this would be from some table in your book. Like if you're working these practice problems, there's probably some table in your book that talks about copper that gives you copper's value. So if I go back to my chart here, you know, I'd have a, you know, some value for copper, right? So there's the value for copper from my table, right? Mass, heat capacity, delta T, multiply. Comes out in joules because the heat capacity is joules, so it retains this value. So this, is, this has to be in grams, okay? Degree C, okay? So um, these are relatively, relatively straightforward, okay? Same kind of thing for that one. Again, these are same. All right, let's see. Um, So let's say I'd, there's really only just one section left, which is, you know, chemical reactions and Hess's law. Um, so I don't really, 